Okay, this presentation is Third Time's the Charm, introducing Trinity UI and how you can contribute, and will be presented by Michael Green and Sean Foster. Michael is the Associate Director for Learning Technology Services and Strategy at Duke Learning Innovation. Before joining Duke Learning Innovation, Michael held an Assistant Professor of IT position at Rappahannock Community College, delivering high quality and engaging courses in information, literacy, and web design, while building his understanding of IT service and team management. For that, he built a portfolio of websites and services and honed his design sense as the college web solution specialist. Sean is an e-learning technology specialist at Western University. He works with Western's local Sakai-focused developers, e-learning teams, and central technology support teams to further enhance online and blending learning at Western. Sean has been involved in the Sakai community since 2011. He regularly attends community calls, contributes development and user interface improvements, and collaborates with other members of the Sakai community from both development and e-learning perspectives. Please remember to mute yourself when not speaking to avoid distance background noises. We have set the room to mute participants upon entry, but you do have the ability to unmute yourselves in order to speak or ask questions. Be sure to double check and make sure that you are muted. Also, we ask that you please leave your webcam turned off unless you are speaking. If you have any questions, enter them in the chat and um, we can answer those as they come up or at the end, depending on how you guys, Michael and, and Sean, want to handle that. Uh, the session is being recorded and will be available at a later, later date on the Sakai YouTube channel. If you have any problems with video or audio, enter a comment in the chat box. With that, I'll hand it over to you guys. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks so much. And hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, and we're going to jump right into third times the charm, introducing Trinity. Um, so today we're going to um, just give you a little overview of how we got to where we are now, and then introduce what Trinity is in case you haven't heard about it. And then um, the second half we'll do a hackathon and get you guys involved with uh, with working with Trinity. And uh, regarding the the questions, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. And after we go through this little introduction, um, we can we can answer them as we go. So uh, yeah, just put them in the chat if they come up. So uh, I just want to go over a quick timeline of how we got here. Um, really, it kind of started back in 2016 with some early discussions about the need for more consistency in Sakai, particularly when um, instructors and students are, are using the tools and, and, and moving from tool to tool. Uh, each tool kind of did things differently. And that's just based on Sakai's history of where we've come from, uh, from uh, the early collection of uh, multiple schools and, and the tools that they contributed for the first version of Sakai, all the way up to um, our, our diverse community and um, all the different contributors that we've had over the years and from all over the world. And so in 2017, we launched the Switch project, which was an initiative that stood for standardization within tools can happen. So yeah, for Adam, there's there's your acronym for that day. Um, and uh, the, the Switch project was a way to build this awareness of consistency um, that is needed um, across Sakai and across the tools, and then to um, start working on that and defining um, the, the core pieces that are needed to make each tool consistent. So in that year, we started a UI inventory of all the existing elements that were in Sakai. So that could be all of the, the buttons, the tables, the date pickers, everything. And so um, a few very devoted individuals did a great job of, of mapping out that. They went to all the pages, took screenshots of all the various different types of that, and uh, created this UI inventory of, of what we had in Sakai now as kind of a snapshot of, of all the different pieces that uh, we would need um, for our um, consistent UI, as well as to be able to know all the different places that we might have to change things. From that, uh, Duke uh, led the initiative to um, get a designer on board and start working with that and, and um, trying to make unified uh, components and, and elements from that. And uh, through 2018, we uh, worked on uh, researching different types of style guides and pattern libraries that we could use in order to define those elements um, as kind of the building blocks for Sakai so that um, all the current and future development could 
be using this, those same um, components. Into 2019, we started a bit of the work to standardize some of those visual elements, and some of those elements include uh, buttons and banners, and tables and headings, and those sorts of things, so that um, we started to see in, in um, Sakai 19 and Sakai 20 some of that uh, standardization happening across tools, so that all the uh, tools and pages were starting to get a similar look and structure and some similar elements, although there was still a long ways to go. And then at the beginning of 2020 at Sakai Camp, uh, or just before that, I guess, um, we uh, we contracted some outside designers and had a lot of great discussions um, in January of 2020 with the uh, uh, at Sakai Camp in Orlando, and uh, to start reimagining uh, Sakai's UI, not just Portal like we've done with uh, Neo and, and Morpheus in the past, but to design redesigned how the tools interacted with with the site and with the with the whole environment. And uh, at the second half of 2020, uh, Michael and I uh, were on building uh, the dark theme for Sakai 21. And so it's in Sakai 21. And through that work there, uh, it also helped progress the Switch project by um, identifying a lot of those elements that we had identified in earlier years and, and really starting to make more them more consistent because dark theme really brought out um, how, how different things were um, in just very small little pieces of the UI, like really those hidden pieces. So I appreciate all of the work that the QA team did um, to find all those little cases for us because it really helped bring this whole initiative forward. So that takes us up to last year. And as we moved into 2021, uh, we really launched the, the Trinity project. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Michael now to give us a little bit of an introduction to what Trinity is, and then we'll go into uh, working on it. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Sean. Um... So, as Sean stated, the, the, the started uh, right before the pandemic, I would say, was when this really picked up. And um, we got a couple of community members together, created this, this doc, and, you know, it was an aspirational doc uh, with the language that you see here. Um, I, I didn't put the link to that particular doc here, but I'm happy to, to grab that and, and link that for folks if they want to see. And... Trinity has evolved quite a bit um, over the past two years, and I think I, I'm, I'm really excited to show a little bit of the current state and what we've been up to, and then get into um, how you might contribute. So if you haven't uh, had a chance to see this first link yet, um, it is an example of the vision that we're, that we're hoping for. Not a pixel perfect thing, that, but but you know kind of a a work in progress a prototype that we can use to kind of have the conversation around this and as you can go through a couple of things you can start to see you know how the sidebar looks different and that there's no favorites and um, we have an assignments tool built out and you can see a little bit of some some different you know UX patterns around um, how the the tool tables might look and, and things like that. Um, and so it's it's not fully functional. This isn't in a Sakai instance. This is just um, smoke and mirrors that we can use to kind of facilitate the conversation around what an updated UI might look like. And that's um, some work that Sean and I put in over the summer and we're now working with other folks in the community um, out of this JIRA project here to start saying, well, how are we going to implement some of that? And so there's a project inside of the, the new JIRA cloud uh, called Trinity, and we're starting to um, you know, map out an implementation plan and, and, and figure out how we're gonna get this thing done because it's quite a massive effort. If anyone was around for the Morpheus implementation, you might know how, how big of an effort that was. And um, we think this could potentially be bigger than that. I'm, I don't know. I wasn't a part of the Morpheus effort. So, um, but that's, uh, you know, so if you're interested in the state of this work and where it is, then this is definitely a place to check out. Um, I also want to mention, well, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. And then something that was a core decision made by the community early on was how are we going to implement this, right? And so we're going to continue using Bootstrap as our uh, UI library, but we're, we're updating to Bootstrap 5, which came out earlier this year. And so if you haven't taken a look at that, um, you know, there's a, there's a link to the documentation there. We'll be digging into their button class today, um, or the button component today. And um, yeah, so 
uh, we thought we would really try something interesting that will most likely work uh, or not work as all live internet demos don't work. Um, but we were hoping we could get people involved and, and play around with some things. So um, I'm curious in the chat, uh, could you give me a plus one if you have a Sakai localhost environment that you could play around with today? Just kind of curious who's who's in the room and uh, that's good that you have one, Earl. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> um, and so this is good. We've got we've got folks. Um, so this is definitely um, the the way I've pitched this is it's towards folks who kind of understand how community development works with Sakai. If you're unfamiliar with that, I may move a little bit fast, but we're happy to take questions and and backtrack. So uh, if you're if you don't have a Sakai localhost environment, I want to shout out uh, Matt Jones and his uh, Docker Sakai. Builder that's under the Sakai Contrib project. Um, it's a, if you know Docker, it's a fairly straightforward way to get a Sakai instance up and running. If you don't know Docker, then I would suggest following the, the steps that we have listed in uh, Confluence. Um, and yeah, so a very important thing with the Trinity project is that it is its own upstream branch, right? So if we um, come back to Sakai project. Sakai, almost all the work we do in Sakai is based off of master. And what we have done is we have created an upstream branch called Trinity that is rebased with master regularly, but it is separate. And the reason for that was we realized that this Trinity effort is a, is a long-term project. It's not a single PR. Uh, there's a lot of work that has to be done. And we're also trying to release you know, 21.2 and 22.0. There's, there's a lot of other work that needs to go on. So we're, we have this separate branch so that we don't conflict or slow down any of that other work. And so it's really important that if you want to play around with Trinity and contribute to that work that you, you know, you do a git fetch upstream Trinity and you check out the Trinity branch and that's what you base your work off of versus basing it off of master, which is what we typically do, right? And so if you've got a local host, go ahead. I just, you know, call your branch name, whatever you want, SVC for the Sakai Virtual Conference. And so um, when I switch screens, that's um, what I've got up. And I'll switch to my, um, in a moment, I'll switch to my editor and we'll, we'll live in there for the rest of the time. So there's two things I want to talk through. Um, we have uh, an updated um, web component which is another key thing that we're going to be using a lot as part of the Trinity project. So we talked about Bootstrap a moment ago. Web components, as as you may know, right, have been growing and growing in their use in Sakai. And uh, now we think this is a good time as we're refreshing the entire UI to, to really pull a lot of web components over to the rest of the tools to really help with that standardization effort that uh, the switch project started and so there's two files that we're going to really look at today so if you have you know that if you did this and you have trinity locally that you can start playing with and you have a branch that you can you know really mess around with you should see these two files right in the web components directory there's a sakai button js file and then in portal uh you know there's the include page body which is not a new file but we're going to use that for our kind of practice run here and um so the Sakai button is a web component that lets you use a custom HTML tag, Sakai hyphen button. And there's kind of three steps to, to making it work outside of, um, or inside of, inside of Sakai. So let me go ahead and switch over to my IDE and... While you're doing that, Michael, I'm just going to add on to what you just said, which is um, the, the reason that we're looking at Bootstrap and uh, web components as, as kind of the foundational pieces to Trinity is, is going back to what I said earlier with Switch and the UI inventory that we did back then is um, by providing a menu of items that uh, developers can choose from or even designers can choose from when, when they're building uh, UIs, it, it, it allows for more consistency that way. So um, that rather than anybody doing anything that um, they want, they, we, we built reusable components that can be used across all of the different Java frameworks that we use in Sakai. And uh, it, it'll allow for that consistency um, to, to be more easily, um, I don't want to say controlled, but uh, ma maintained, I guess is a better way to say it. Yeah. 
So here we've got both of these files up and um, and mostly I want to I want to kind of dig into this right this is a velocity file something we're familiar with and on line 126 ish um, you start to have the help button right so you know all of the tools upper right hand corner of the tool they've got that link in the help button so this is this is one that I thought would be a good practice run for folks that have never worked with these and so um, what you might do, and it does depend on a property we, we have set here, so we're going to do this twice. Um, but if if we simply do Sakai button slash Sakai button, we just throw that there. Um, it's it's not going to work, but that's a, that's a good starting point. So we can save that template. Uh, we can go into portal. We can do a Maven build, and then we can take a look at what happens at our markup. Yeah, so the, for those of you that aren't familiar with web components, web components are a way to be able to essentially define new HTML elements um, and new tags. So we've, we've created and already defined the sky button and now we are able to use it just like you can with other, um, I should say out of the box HTML elements. Yep, so I did a Maven build and nothing. So there's a really important step that you have to do, uh, which is like tell the browser that it should pay attention to that JavaScript file that contains the web component definition. And so just adding the markup itself doesn't doesn't work. And we are we had to talk about this yesterday, and we're working on a way to kind of remove that need and kind of uh, abstract it a little bit, maybe inside of head scripts or another place inside of Sakai, so that the entire app is kind of aware that it has this library of web components and you don't need to include the scripts on every template page. Um, we don't have that done today. So for today, we're going to do a, um, we're going to add a script tag to our markup and that should be the, the last thing we need to get a basic thing running. So we'll up here we'll just do something like this inside of this particular if statement we'll do uh, actually just do this Boop. so we'll do a script type module and tell it where to go find it and um, so this is where tomcat is gonna have put that file and we'll do another maven build and switch over here and do a refresh and hopefully live internet demo gives us something. Yeah, there we go. Some strange thing has happened to our markup. And uh, if we do an inspect, we can see that now we got, now this I might need to make bigger. Let's have for folks. Uh, so now we can see that it's a plain Sakai button. It has a shadow root and some stuff is happening. And if we go look at that JavaScript file that contains the definition, uh, this stuff will look familiar. This is what's inside of that. And, um, and so now we could start adding things to make this actually do what we want, right? So uh, this particular, um, let me switch back to the IDE. This is the only thing I don't like about a big blue button. I have multiple screens and it's a little difficult to switch back and forth. Um, so we're going to keep going here. And for a little while, I'm going to keep the old tag. Once you know what you're doing, you certainly don't have to, to do that. Um, but we're going to start adding some things that we know we want. So we know we want some, some content here, right? So should be able to just copy this paste down here copy this paste and then we're going to do uh, one more thing which is uh, we're going to keep we're going to do this href we're going to add that inside of Sakai button which might sound strange because buttons themselves don't have an href and this is part of the um, beauty of web components, I guess, is we can we can mold them to meet our needs, right? So in Sakai, we have buttons that are using anchor tags. We have buttons using inputs, buttons using buttons. And if we want to try to standardize that, we're going to need to accommodate 
where we came from. And so one of the ways we can do that is by recognizing that even though at the end of the day, we want this to be a button in our markup, not an anchor tag, that anchor tag had an href. And so we'll do that. And then we're going to add um, something specific here called SAC class. And then um, that's just going to be on both. And this is a way for us to apply, apply CSS classes to the content inside of this web component without it actually modifying the component itself, right? So if I just came in here and did class like you would with other markup, it's going to try to apply those styles to, to this host element. And in this case, we don't want to do that. So we've created a, a property that allows us to pass those things through. And we could say, let's make this a button primary. And we'll save that, do a Maven build, and switch back over and see what happens here. Yeah, we should give a shout out to Adrian for all the work that he's done with web components in Sakai and uh, particularly the button that we're using today. Thank you, Adrian. Yeah, very true. I have modified very little code to get this demo up and running. That's so much effort in Adrian's stuff, hopefully. Oh, so many interesting things have happened, right? So now we have our internationalized text string has come over. And also uh, because Bootstrap has, uh, so if we come down here to our components and we go to buttons, Bootstrap comes with a, you know, a variety of button styles. And so some things we're doing out of the box, right, is we're applying this BTN style. So you don't have to remember that. You just have to say, well, what type of button do I want? Right, I want a primary or I want a dark button or a link button. And as we kind of build out all of these components, we'll have more and more kind of a of an API, so to speak, for you to use. So if you wanted to use an outline button, we'd be able to do that as well. Changing the size via these button large, button small, all the things that Bootstrap includes. Our goal is to to be able to leverage them in a way that makes sense but also set a lot of really good defaults so that um, you know out of the gate things are standardized and there's less effort for our developer community to 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 remember all of those things and um, so yes let me go back here and so a couple of things are going on right like there's styling in the morpheus skin the previous skin that makes these a particular size and padding and things like that that is not being applied to this button because it's a web component. Um, and, and so that's why there's sizing and margin and issues and things like that. But that is to be expected. Um, and as we go throughout you know, converting all of the UI up to this Trinity UI, then and we'll fix those things in mass because we'll say, well, our buttons should have you know, a margin or something. You know, we, we would fix them all at once instead of having to do every implementation of a button needs to have padding. And um, let's see, let me, was there one more thing I want to, and does it work? I guess that, that'd be the thing to test. It worked for me earlier, but <laughs> you know how that goes. Um, yeah, yeah, perfect. So it, it did actually work. So, and that was a little bit easier for it to work because we came from an anchor tag. So one of the things as we switch to kind of how you might play around with this is uh, for today at least focusing on buttons that are outside of a form form elements trying to trigger a form submit from a web component when the entire form is in a web component uh, is a little bit trickier and we don't have that uh, fully working quite yet so you know what i'd encourage you to do is go look for other buttons in the ui right i mean you're right next to this link button maybe try that um, you know if there's a tool that you're really familiar with start start thinking through well what would it look like if i just wanted to replace this you know manually uh, this this individual implementation of a button with our shared sakai button and it's you know for today it's it's mostly about the mindset of of doing development in that way um there's not you know this is probably not the final markup that sakai 23.0 will be released with right we'll, we'll be making updates to these components over the next year um and so I, I will pause because I have not been able to read chat and I see uh, some stuff. So see Sam has a great question. Are there some amazing um, FOSS web component libraries? Yeah, uh, one that I've paid attention to is the one out of IBM Red Hat. Um, 
the name is escaping me now. Shoot. Pattern, pattern fly, right? This was one. They did a non-web component version and a web component version of their UI library. Um, and certainly, as some of you may know, Brian Allendyke, who's uh, you know Perio member, had lots of conversations with him over the years over philosophy of web components and um, and whatnot. I believe also Google's Material Design Library is is working on a web component implementation of that, so that you don't have to use their Go or, or whatever language that was originally built in. Interestingly, Bootstrap considered making a web component version of their um, UI library, but decided not to do that for v5. And I don't know all the rationale behind that. There was a, oh, I don't know if it was a PR, but there was certainly an issue in their GitHub repo, and they decided to push that to, to v6 of Bootstrap. So we'll be kind of ahead of the curve a little bit on, on what we're trying to do there. It's kind of interesting work. Yeah, that's one of the reasons we're encapsulating this with Sakai tags, right, Michael? Is to, to allow for us to switch them mm -hmm. out without having to update all sure. the markup. Sure. Yeah. Let me let me switch back over to my IDE and and kind of walk through a little bit of the. Pardon me, the JavaScript file. So you know there there are there's some really important things, right? We're using the lit lit element or lit uh, framework for our web components. That's a, that's a key library to be taking a look at. Um, and that's that's more of the like how um, how do the web components actually work and, and much less about the look and feel of them. And then that's where Bootstrap comes in is to apply some look and feel to them. So you'll see a lot of references to lit element depending on um, what the the web component is. You'll also see some references to Lion, which is out of ING Bank, and they have a really great uh, web component library. Uh, particularly around form elements. And so it'll be interesting once we get to forms with this work is how we blend the bootstrap styles with um, the lion uh, form elements. Vaden, yeah, that's that's a good one too. There's, a, I mean, there's a ton. I am, I'm certainly not um, an expert uh, here. There's, yeah, there you go, webcomponents.org. That's a great resource to kind of take a look at things. Um, Right, so um, if you, I'm curious, can I get a plus one in the chat if you have done any work with web components in or outside of Sakai? Just kind of get a sense of folks' um, familiarity with, with that, uh, that technique. Cool, cool, cool. So, um, a few people. Yep. Yeah. What I might, what I might do after the session is um, we could try to find some some good like intro, uh, intro to web components blogs because uh, you know as you know like one of the tough things about Sakai is it's its own uh, you know beast of a thing to learn and um, you know, sometimes if you're learning a new framework or a new technique like web components it could be tough to just jump right into Sakai so we can look for some some good like blogs or videos that kind of lead you down the path of, of lit HTML, lit element development, and then you can apply that to Sakai. I did not get that in prep for today's session. Um, so the thing I wanted to um, show that we didn't really talk through yet is this render piece down in the bottom. And there's, you know, there's a couple of things that I already know we're going to change, right? One of the things is how we're ingesting the styles from Bootstrap. This works, right? But this is not ideal for performance and um, will not be what we release at the end of the day. But for today's session and getting something to work, this was um, this was what, what we're going to use temporarily. Um, ideally, you want to really encapsulate everything with your component, right? So you don't want to include external styles. We don't want to have things um, impacting the component unless we really want them to. And if you're familiar with CSS custom properties, that is an incredibly valuable 
technique that we'll be using and we've began using quite a bit in Sakai 21 we'll be making a lot of use of them that'll allow you, know, you to have a branded instance of Sakai like you currently do your logo and your institution's theme your colors and things like that and then the button would inherit that instead of using the bootstrap styles right because that bootstrap blue is most likely not the button color you want for your uh, your primary button and um, you remember earlier we used that SAK class attribute over here to define some CSS classes and um, that gets translated in this current way. It applies the BTN style because we know no matter what we want this to be a button and that's a requirement on the bootstrap end. If you define something it uses that and if you don't define something we just use it as a secondary button. So uh, that's why the first go around of this, it actually had a nice rounded corners. It had gray background. It didn't have any text because we hadn't put the language string in yet. But um, so uh, where did that language string go? That's what this slot element is for. There's this is a really handy mechanism for passing markup into a web component. So that's that's where these span tags go. And uh, they they just flow right into that slot. They have, you know, classes of their own on them. It, and um, so it's, it's a really handy way to allow you some more flexibility with a web component versus having to be very strict about what you can and can't put in to the tag itself. Sometimes you want to use that. Sometimes those don't. There's definitely, Adrian probably has a much better handle on why you would or wouldn't want to use slots. It's just this particular web component is making use of them. And one of the things I did is actually we've had a Sakai button for a long time. You may not have known that. Um, and it had its own styles, most of which were, you know, copying over things from the Morpheus skin that we needed inside of the component. I actually commented all of that out for this so you can kind of get a sense of out of the box how this works before we even kind of start Sakaiifying it. And that's one of the reasons why, the, you know, it, it looks so uh, different. And if I actually switch back to... Uh, this one and we go to another tool so we'll, we'll go to another site and again this is a this is a Morpheus site it's an it's an old site with the Morpheus skin on it and now I've got let's see if this works the way I think it is yeah so go to the dashboard tool which is a new tool written completely in web components and I did update one of the components there to, to use this updated button and you can kind of get a sense of 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 how that works. I can link that particular file as well. Um, and then I wanted to show you something interesting. So if you're really interested in doing this work, the, one of the things you're going to want to do is actually create a site and put the Trinity skin on it. And so, you know, you go, if you don't know how to do that, you go um, admin workspace, go find a site. Pull this down just a little bit. And uh, I've got a site I created called Trinity. Open it up and scroll down a bit. Really handy little form field there to apply the skin of your choice. You can also set your property right to have the default skin be Trinity and then that'll be everything will look like this. But if you do this, you go to that site, it's going to look like this. And so there's some things to note is it's 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 clearly lacking some style, but it's um, it's not completely lacking style, right? These are not browser default blue. This is not browser default font. So it actually is applying the skin, uh, the Trinity skin. It's just, we've got a lot of work to do, right? And um, if I scroll down in our markup, you can see here's uh, here's the help button that we have updated in portal and what it looks like out of the box. And so this is more close to what our actual buttons will look like. Yes, this might be a good time, Michael, to, um, to, to just give them an overview of, of our next steps then. Sure, sure. Um, switch back to the, I don't think I had a slide for that in particular. Um, do you mean next steps for Trinity as the project? Yeah, yeah, like or what we have on that, um, the, your, your Trinity list, I think, on your second tab there. Oh, sure, sure, sure. So uh, we've been focused currently at trying to get the infrastructure in place to let people rock and roll really. Um, so 
we have a lot of big changes in the library that I haven't really talked about much today, and we're working on a lot of the big changes to the Web Components directory. And once those are in place, I think we'll be really comfortable just kind of letting anybody, uh, you know, contribute to the project because you'll have the things you need right now. If you try to go work on this stuff, you might not have the, you know, previously you didn't have the Bootstrap files there. You didn't you didn't have the the upgrade updated uh, UI library. So we've got that in. And I can dig into what's going on in the library project uh, in a moment. We're working on a new nightly server that'll be based off of the Trinity uh, branch itself, so that as you you know put in pull requests and we need to do QA on these things, we'll, we'll have a, a resource available for that. And um, and then we're going to be doing you know some some cleanup, right? Something Sean and I have wanted to do for a long time is move our non-library CSS in into library or or pull CSS out of tools uh, because it most likely doesn't need to exist there, right? And and one of the reasons we have a lot of non-standard UI is because we have CSS all over the place. And so if we pull it all out and we really try to condense it down and standardize it, that that's that's one of the goals of this project. And then uh, as Sean uh, mentioned earlier, it's not just a portal you know, rewrite, right? We, we want to actually change the the UI and the UX of the tools themselves. And so the way the tables behave, the way a page that used to have you know, tabs might not have tabs anymore, or the tabs might operate differently. The way forms behave, um, let me show this, like some, some simple, to me this feels simple, but this I think is a really nice UX pattern, right? The, the, the action buttons of this form stay sticky to the bottom, right? I think we have some long forms in Sakai, that'd be a nice UX pattern, right? And those are things, um, certainly there's some portal change here on the sidebar that we're hoping to accomplish. It's a much more Slack-like sidebar. Um, and then if I come back here, like the way that edit, remove, we're working on, you know, patterns to not require so many columns in the tables to display these action buttons, but to make them dynamic. Uh, currently they show on a checkbox click, maybe they show on a hover or some other action as well. But And, um, and then, so that's what all of these projects are. It's like at some point we need to dig into an entire tool and, um, and up, upgrade the, the templates to use the new UI. Yeah, so that's where all of you guys come in. Uh, we're looking for assistance once we get some of this initial stuff all set up um, to, to start going through and, and working on the tools. So we'll have it more defined by then and uh, we'll be able to start uh, going tool by tool and making sure that these new uh, conventions are, are added to all the all the pages and all the tools. That's the big part that uh, Earl and uh, um, Michael alluded to earlier. To, earlier in that conversation. And actually, we can plug it that uh, um, Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern in uh, Big Blue Button Room 4 is uh, where we talk about these things. So we do have a UI uh, technical design uh, meeting at that time. So feel free to join us there if you're interested in getting involved in this Trinity work. The last thing I want to make sure to mention, because I know we're running short on time, is if you do some work, you're going to want to put a pull request in. And when you do that, um, do I have any? Yeah, cool. So let me uh, just really quickly uh, put a commit in, get push origin. Let me see. So um, when you put a pull request in, you have to remember to do a very important thing, which is base it off the Trinity branch, right? If you, we normally don't ever mess with this, right? We, we do all of our PRs against master and that is that is a key piece of the workflow here is to base your, um, your PRs off of upstream Trinity. And then, and then we'll, we'll review them. You create a PR. We've got that group that meets Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern. And um, we would love to, Take a look at any work you want to contribute to the project. If you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to, to Sean or I. We'd love to chat up with folks about this. 
And as Michael said earlier, the, the Trinity branch is important so that we can work on this while um, work is continuing in master on 22. And then once 22.0 is released, then we'll we'll look at uh, merging this into master uh, for 23. But this will allow us to uh, iterate on it uh, separate of, of the 22 initiative, as well as be able to get people looking at it from a QA and UX testing perspective. So it'll give us lots of opportunities. And so that's why we're looking at getting the nightly server set up with Trinity on it. So you'll be able to see how it progresses and we'll be able to work off of this branch separate of the other work. So we have a few minutes left. Are there any questions um, that anyone had? Was uh, was the people that said they had development environments, were you able to get the um, Trinity branch uh, downloaded and um, built? Were you able to uh, add a button like what Michael showed? Do you have any feedback about anything that we showed today? Ready to uh, unmute yourself or put a comment in the chat. I should also say too that um, Trinity isn't just a developer initiative. We are looking for others' uh, uh, assistance as well. QA and UX testing will be a big uh, piece to it in um, in the upcoming months um, as we get more to uh, more of it uh, flushed out and uh, working. So we look forward to um, non-developers working al alongside of us as well. See, there's been quite a conversation in the chat about different component uh, frameworks. <laughs> so I'll let that just continue. Like House Watch Party asks, can we talk more about Patternfly? Someone else may need to. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I've not done a deep dive on Patternfly. I thought it was um, a great effort considering it was coming out of Red Hat and we knew it was going to work with their enterprise systems um but i i don't i don't really know more than that if others feel no <laughs> no i i um we reviewed it as an as an option for trinity um but but decided that because we were on uh Bootstrap, and we had some developer knowledge around that framework. Um, it would it would be an easier shift, an easier up upgrade to stick with Bootstrap than to shift everything over to Patternfly. Are there any other questions that anybody has? Thoughts or comments? Oh, Adam's been working <laughs> on a acronym for Trinity. So he's got oh, the Adam. Revolutionary what do we got here? Interface normalizing Third revolutionary interface normalizing interactions throughout your. Wow. Well played, sir. Send that Thank man to so Kiger. Thank you so much, Adam, for that. My day. Yeah, so there's a suggestion in the comments saying that um, a workshop on Sakai's approach to web components, uh, uh, having a workshop on that would be great. Yeah, and I agree. We, uh, we'll get a few more things fleshed out first, and then we'll... Uh, so the, the Lake House mentioned some additional workshops around you know, web components. And I think that would be great, um, great content for maybe the developer office hours, which I, this semester have a local conflict at Duke, but um, I think they're Wednesdays, Earl or Chuck, you may need to help me out here, Wednesdays at, at 10 a.m. Eastern, every other Wednesday, is it 10 or 11 Eastern, 11 a.m. Eastern. They're on the Sakai community calendar and um, that may be a good opportunity. I'd be happy once I, Hopefully next term I won't have this conflict with them. Be happy to come back and schedule something for one of those 
maybe tag team with Sean and Adrian could be could be fun. I'm going to have to think on the Merovingian, Josh. It's a good question. So I think uh, we'll probably wrap up there. We'll stay on for a few more minutes if people have more to discuss in the conversation. But I want to thank everybody for attending today. And uh, hopefully you uh, learned a little bit. Oh, and hopefully you I have liked... not been hearing you, Sean. Are folks hearing me? I hear you. Yeah, we can okay. hear you, Michael. Yeah, sorry, Sean. Oh, they can hear both of us. Oh, I don't hear Sean. Oops. Did I do something? <laughs> Yeah, so hopefully you like um, what we've shown today and uh, feel free to reach out if you would like to get involved. Um, we need lots of uh, people power for this and uh, we like um, your feedback as well as we go. So great. Thanks so much for attending everyone. Have a good rest of your day and we'll see you in other sessions. Thanks guys.